You know what they say, Lion King in the streets, Bunny Queen in the sheets. Hello everyone, Sober Oni of g &A Reviews here, with a servant spotlight for Caudia's casino connoisseur, Artoria Ruler. We'll be examining her stats and skills, as well as going over pointers to how you utilize her effectively, and an overall grade comparing her to how she stacks up to the other 5 star servants. So if you're ready to take a seat at her table, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, and ring my bell, so that you can catch all of these spotlight videos as they go up, and help out the channel. But for now, onto Artoria's stats. Artoria Ruler has a max HP of 16,912 and a max attack of 9,593, which becomes 10,552 due to her Ruler Class modifier. Impressively enough, Artoria has the highest HP stat of any Ruler in the game, surpassing even Jean, although she does also have the lowest attack as well. And the same holds true when compared to the rest of the 5 star servants, with Ruler Artoria having the second highest HP stat in the entire game but also one of the lowest attack stats for her rarity. When it comes to her command cards, Artoria has 4 hits on her quick card, 4 hits on her arts, 3 hits on her buster, and 5 hits on her extra card. She has an NP gain rate of 0.57% and a star rate of 10%. Overall, Artoria has an extremely defensive stat spread, which is more suited for supports. Her NP gain is good, but it mostly comes from just her strong arts card, of which she only has one. Her star generating is also decent due to the double quick deck and good hit counts. Taking a look at her skills, Artoria's first skill is Royal Bunny Rank A. This skill charges Artoria's NP gauge between 20 and 40% depending on level. It also grants her one turn of evasion and it grants her a delayed attack buff which will increase her attack between 20 and 30% for one turn after a turn depending on level. Her second skill is Royal Card Rank C+. This this skill will randomly deal out 5 new command cards, and it will increase the party's crit damage for 3 turns between 30 and 50%. This skill can be upgraded through a strengthening quest, turning it into Royal Card Rank B+, which will grant it the additional effect of being able to block an ally's command cards from appearing for 1 turn, as well as increasing the party's NP generation for 1 turn between 20 and 30% depending on level. And finally, her last skill is the Knight of the Lion rank B. This skill increases her attack for 3 turns between 20 and 40%, and it'll also increase her star absorb for 1 turn between 300 and 600%, both depending on level. As for her passives, Buntoria has Magic Resistance rank A, which increases her debuff resist by 20%, and Territory Creation rank B, which increases her arts card effectiveness by 8%. Moving on to her deck and Noble Phantasm, Bunny Artoria has a quick buff Buster deck with Quick Quick, Art Buster Buster, and a Buster Noble Phantasm. Her Noble Phantasm is Bright Anguin. It's an AoE Buster attack that deals defense ignoring damage to all enemies, with between a 300 and 500% damage modifier depending on level. It also charges Artoria's NP gauge by 20%, and it increases her Quick, Art, and Buster card effectiveness between 20 and 40% for one turn depending on overcharge. Thankfully, as a ruler, Artoria has extremely simple ascension mat requirements, which are very accessible even to brand new players. For level ascension, she just needs 5 copies of each class piece and monument, which can be farmed at the daily training grounds. As for skill leveling, she's going to need 5 copies of each skill gem, as well as 12 seashells and 15 dragon scales per skill. Seashells drop at the observatory in Babylonia with a 40% drop rate, and dragon scales can be farmed at Nipper in Babylonia with a 12% drop rate. I guess it was only a matter of time until Artoria found her way into the ruler class. But fear not, because this isn't the same old Artoria with the same skills in a new class. Buntoria has quite a different and unique playstyle from her Saber counterparts. For one thing, she is extremely defensively focused. Not only does she have the second highest HP stat in the game, but as a ruler, her HP is twice as effective, thanks to her resistance to nearly every class. So anything short of an enemy noble phantasm won't put much of a dent in her. Her star generating and NP gain are also quite good, if a bit inconsistent. Although her attack does suffer considerably and is even lower than some 4 star servants, including other 4 star rulers. Fortunately though, Artoria does have a way of remedying this lack of damage and NP gain within her kit. Because if you thought that this defensively statted servant had a defensive skill set to match, well then you haven't been playing FGO 
very long. Artoria's first skill, Royal Bunny, is a hodgepodge of buffs. It charges her NP gauge by 40%, while also providing her with an evade, and a delayed buff that increases her attack by 30%. There's a lot going on with this skill. It's simultaneously Artoria's best offensive skill and only defensive skill. The NP charge is massive and it can easily set her up for wave clears, although do keep in mind that the attack buff is delayed, which means that it's sometimes better to wait to use Artoria's NP until the next turn. However, in certain team comps, if you're able to NP twice in a row with Artoria, the delayed attack buff can be helpful for clearing a second wave of enemies. The Evasion is a standard one turn evade, which is good, but given Artoria's playstyle and aggression, you're almost always going to want to use this skill offensively. Artoria has another attack buff in her third skill, Knight of the Lion. It's a three turn 40% attack buff that also increases her star absorb massively for a turn. A 40% attack buff for three turns is actually pretty huge. It's very very overstated, so it helps Artoria's damage a ton. The Star Absorb also gives Artoria some good burst potential as well. But Artoria's most unique skill by far is Royal Card. It's a command card shuffle that provides the party with a 50% buff to crit damage. Later on, it's also going to gain the ability of increasing the party's NP gain by up to 30%, and even certain command cards can be stopped from appearing. This is an extremely versatile support skill with all kinds of crazy gimmick applications, very similar to Summer BB's card freezing skill. It not only shuffles your hand with brand new cards like the Mage Association Mystic Code, but later on it even gains the ability to exclude an ally's cards from appearing. So for example, if your hand is filled with Mosh cards, Artoria can reshuffle it and specifically block all Mosh cards from appearing again. This does wonders for RNG based teams that want to use servants like Hokusai and Hozuin to abuse their card mechanics. But aside from that, it's also just a generally good support skill for crit teams, since it gives a massive buff to crit damage on par with Chiron, and it even buffs the team's NP gain by a decent amount. For skill leveling, go with Royal Bunny first because the NP charge is just so good, followed by Knight of the Lion for more damage, and then Royal Card for utility. Artoria's Noble Phantasm is an AoE buster attack that ignores defense, and also buffs all of Artoria's cards, and it also charges her NP gauge by 20%. The card buffing is good not only for buffing her damage, but also improving her star generating and NP gain in Brave Chain. And of course, the extra 20% NP charge can be useful for setting up Artoria for another Noble Phantasm. The fact that this NP ignores defense also gives it some nice utility for challenge quests. That being said though, the damage isn't that good given Artoria's low attack, so don't expect it to take out large enemy waves. Artoria Ruler is a jack of all trades type of servant, so she can do a little bit of everything well. She packs some very strong steroids in her kit, as well as crit buffs and star absorbs so she can actually make for a decent DPS despite her low attack so long as she has enough crit stars and some decent support. Speaking of which, she can also work as a semi-support in crit teams. Her card shuffle mechanic is one of a kind and it's invaluable for mitigating bad RNG. Plus her party-wide crit buff and NP gain buff are quite strong. But by far her best role is that of a farmer. She has a large NP battery for immediate wave clear. And because her NP refunds 20% charge, she can be set up for a follow-up Noble Phantasm when paired with NP battery servants. But as you'd expect with most Jack of All Trade servants, Artoria Ruler's weaknesses lie in her lack of specialization. While she can do a little bit of everything, she isn't really better than average at anything. Many other Buster servants will far out DPS her, many other servants are better farmers, and of course there are plenty of better supports. Artoria Ruler is more like a Swiss army knife that can be slided into any team comp to fill a role that may be lacking. One other area that causes problems for Artoria is the lack of cohesion in her skill set. Her skills are very jumbled together and difficult to use effectively. For example, her only defensive skill is tied to her best offensive skill, which itself also has a delayed damage buff that is counterintuitive to having an NP charge. And her star absorb and crit damage buffs are split between two separate skills, so things like that make Artoria very awkward to use. 
On the bright side, her playstyle does mean that she fits well into a wide variety of team comps. In more offensive focused teams, it's best to surround her with servants who can bolster her damage or provide her with NP charge, like Shakespeare, Helena, or Reynes. Shakespeare and Helena can both set up Artorio with buster buffs and NP charge from turn 1 for some immediate wave clearing setup, while Reynes provides additional NP charge for situations where multiple noble phantasms are needed. If you want to use Artoria as more of a semi support for bolstering the team, then pair her with servants who can make use of her card shuffle gimmick or that need good crit damage buffs like Summer BB, Summer Hokusai, and Ashvataman. Summer BB has the perfect synergy with Artoria since Artoria can shuffle cards and BB can lock them in, while also providing star generating to match Artoria's crit damage buff. Their synergy is actually kind of scary. Summer Hokusai and Ashvataman are both crit servants that depend heavily on card RNG to maximize their damage, so having Artoria be able to shuffle their cards helps to reduce the RNG on their effects and gives them some good crit buffs. Artoria's Bondcraft Essence is Golden Round Table Roulette. It buffs the party's attack by 10% and crit damage by 15%. This is a good option for Artoria if you're using her as a support, otherwise other good support CEs include 2030, his rightful place heading to Trifoss, or Hero on the Beach. Basically aim for craft essences that can increase star generating, but for farming and offensive team comps, use craft essences that give starting NP charge and boost buster card effectiveness like Aerial Drive, Beautiful Dreamer, Kaleidoscope, or even Starry Nights if you want to splash in some crit damage. In the future, Like a Bird is an excellent pickup for Artoria since it not only generates stars but also buffs Buster Card crit damage. For command codes, Mistress of Heaven is a good choice for bolstering crit damage, but if you want Artoria to respect you, you should use Royal Bunny. Overall, Artoria Ruler is a solid ruler servant that can fill a variety of roles. Her wider array of attack buffs and crit steroids makes her a solid buster DPS, she has a one of a kind card shuffle skill as well as strong buffs for supporting the party, and her massive NP battery makes her a strong farmer and wave clearer. On the downside, she doesn't specialize in anything in particular, so she doesn't excel in any of her roles and her skill set can be difficult and awkward to use because of how all of her effects are arranged. So all in all, Artoria Ruler gets a B plus from me. I think she's a solid choice to fill in a spot in almost any team, especially due to her class. She won't be the servant who can hard carry you or anything, but she's definitely a plus to any team that she's in, and she's exceedingly fun to use in gimmick teams that revolve around card manipulation. And those are my thoughts on Summer Artoria. She's definitely one of the most fun and unique servants in the game, along with Summer BB. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and consider subscribing if you really enjoyed the video. Join the party over at our Discord, chill with us on Twitch, and follow us on Twitter. And I'll see you all in the next Servant Spotlight. So Baroni out, later.